inspection is nice, partly for you, but also then for me. I can't really tell what you're looking at. Um, do I need you to give me that list of 14,000 things? I don't. A couple things would be nice. You know, looking at the face, the lung exam. When you look at the face, what are you going to look for? You're going to look for uh, lips and nose being blue, cyanotic, that kind of thing. Um, or possibly pink cheeks or whatever, difficulty breathing, you know, accessory muscles of respiration, that kind of stuff. As I come down, then I'm going to take a peek at hands. I'm going to look at fingernails. I'm going to look for finger clubbing or actually, you know, this is really palpation, not inspection, but are their hands cold or warm? Do they have distended vessels, that kind of stuff. Heart and lung, about the same, right? It's not so much that you are looking for, how do I say this? You're, you're looking, right? If you see something, then you have to assess it. I don't, I think sometimes it's probably a bad idea if you go in planning to look for something. But I would have things at the top of my head. And then I'm not gonna have to take your feet off, but would you look for feet for some of the same kind of things? So I did an inspection, and then also too, we want to remember to look at the chest and respiration. Is she using that tripod thing where she has her hands out? She's trying to use those to breathe, that kind of stuff. So I don't see anything like that. I don't see any chest wall deformities. I don't see an exaggerated kyphosis. I don't see exaggerated anterior head carriage, those kind of things that may be, that may go with any kind of respiratory problem. So there's the inspection part. Um, next, we could come and, and do either one of these. We could do palpation or percussion first. Um, uh, let's do, I think I'm going to do percussion first. Um, so what I'm going to do is have her spin and face this way. And what I'm going to have you do is crush your arms in front of you, lean forward just a little bit. And so then percussive, we want to start high. And you're not going to really hear anything up high up here, but we do want to compare side to side. And in comparing side to side, I'm kind of coming down the mid-clavicular line and then comparing both sides, listening for what should the sound be? Resonant, right? It should be resonant through lung fields until I get down to where there is no lung. So, yeah, about there. Um, and then the same thing anterior. What we're going to do is spare her the anterior part, right? But we understand if we do an anterior, what we're going to do is come here, go midline so we can end that parasternal, and then we're going to cut back the other way and percuss down. So we did percussion. Uh, now we'll flip flop and we'll do the palpatory part. Um, same things, arms in front of you again. And now I'm going to come down with the MPs of both, both hands, right? Start up here. And we're going to have her say blue moon or toy boat or something like that. So give me some blue moons. Blue moon, blue moon, blue moon, blue moon. Blue moon. Right? And all the way down, right? And we're feeling for increased or decreased firmness. Now understand, we're comparing side to side. So if I feel it increased on this side, it could be increased on this side, it could be decreased on this side. On the side of increased, it's typically gonna be um, a consolidated process. On the side of decreased, then this may be an emphysematous process. Lungs expand, increased air traffic. Um, so I did palpation. Now I wanna do excursion. First part of excursion is this one, I just palpate along, clavicle or rib, whatever, get up, get a bony prominence up high, Go ahead and take a breath. And I fix my hand such that whatever the bony prominence is, go ahead and breathe out, breathe in again, drags my fingers to the side. So I do one high, and then I'll come up sort of armpits, right? I'm going to grab a rib, which is not the most comfortable palpation, fix my hand again, and have her breathe in. I'm going to let her rib take my finger, so I'm going to hold my hand taut. And again. Okay. So what you're looking for is symmetric expansion on both sides. Right? Um, let's say she had a consolidated process here. She had pneumonia here. What we may find is then this side she inadvertently protects. So what's going to happen is you'll see your thumb go out on this side, not move much on this side. Um, somebody with emphysema who's already expanded may not move very much at all. Now, just like lines on x-rays, I, there's a measurement in the book you could use, but you can already see that that measurement could be screwed up in so many different ways that what I'm more interested in you is looking and sort of judging. Do I think this is enough or is it not enough? That kind of thing. Um, like some of the lines on x-rays. If you need the line, then you don't know how to read an x-ray anyway. The line is just there as a teaching tool. And I think that whole like one to two centimeters of the excursion, more of a teaching tool than anything else. Um, 
Um, let's see. So we did that, and now we end up with auscultation. So stethoscope, we want to start high. Now remember, you absolutely always want to listen here, um, and we want to do side-to-side -side comparison. So I'd have her cross her arms in front, take a nice deep breath, and again. We want to listen to at least one full cycle in each spot, you know, so I moved kind of quick. I'd want to see her all the way in, all the way out, all the way in, all the way out. And then I can either go down from here or I can go across. As long as I'm comparing side to side, that's fine. So I listen, I listen, I listen, I listen. Number of spots, I think, for boards and stuff is 14. Um, however, we understand that really what we want to do is if you listen here, the next spot you want to listen to is here. And the next spot you want to listen to is there. So it is, it is here to here to here. You're not jumping big spaces. So right, I mean, if she was 4'8", right, listen to 14 spots, she doesn't have 14 spots to listen to, right? If she's 7'9", probably listen into 28 spots, right? So, um, but I know the boards is going to look for something like 14. Then the other thing to do is do what I always forget to do, is listen on the side, 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 side. So what we want to do is close to the armpit and then down below, because then we can, you've hit, when you've done that, anterior, posterior, and sides, you've hit big chunks of all the major lobes, right? Okay. And extra, um, the one I like, it's oscillatory percussion. So you listen to a spot, if I thought she had problems here, I would listen, tap over uh, spinous process, and then listen, tap over spinous process, okay? Uh, what are the other ones? Whispered pectoriloquy. So the, the goal with that one, so let's say I think she has a problem here, I would want her to whisper one, two, three, or something like that. I want her to whisper it enough so that I can hear it, but I can't make it out. So I'll, I'll say, uh, whisper one, two, three, she'll say one, two, three. Like a little lower, one, two, three. Okay, when I'm listening, then all I can hear is blah, blah, blah. You know, I can hear something, but I can't tell what it is. Then when I listen at the other spot, the spot where I think there's a problem, then it should be clearer if it's consolidated. Now, does it absolutely have to be done the way I just explained it? No, it's just a little easier done that way. You can listen for it to be more distinct from side to side, right? So whisper pectoriloquy, um, bronchophony and egophony. Uh, egophony, right, is the E sound to the A sound. So ever say E and it changes to A, right? I always forget that one because it's so useless. Um, but somebody will test you on it. Uh, that, you know, these always end up being test questions. Um, and then what's the last one? The, uh, the, is, the uh, long, lung base. That was the E to A, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I think if you go back and look at these, it's funny. You'll see a lot of mixed reviews, but you'll see the um, you will see the oscillatory percussion one. Um, I pulled the data on it a couple times, and sometimes you, you'll find some journal articles where it's far superior, and others say it doesn't work at all. So there's a real mixed opinion on that one, which is kind of odd. But none of them are great, all right? We're just kind of, and I think it's the reason there's four of them. Think of it that way. I mean, if any one of them was superior, we would have long since forgotten the other three. Um, so they're kind of just by the fact that they teach you four, that there's four in every textbook. These four show up all the times. Kind of in a roundabout way is telling you none of them are really superior. So what will happen is sometimes you may want to try two or three of them to try to find what you're finding. With that being said, if you think you're hearing something, then chest x-ray is okay.